Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us, as I had earlier stated. I have the Reproductive Health Network Kenya here to talk to us about self-care. Why is self-care important? And by self-care, if you're just joining us, is not self-care for your face, for your skin, no your sexual reproductive health. How do you take good care of yourself? I had mentioned some little ways earlier, like who you share your body with, the things you consume, um, how clean you are, how often you see your doctor. These are some of the things that matter in regards to self-care. But, but it is not in my place to give you all this information. I am equally here to learn. So I have an amazing team with us. They're here to share with us um, everything in regards to self-care with your sexual and reproductive health. Allow me, allow me, allow me to introduce to you my amazing guest, Karibuni Sana. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We really appreciate. Uh, Ladies first, right? Sure. Um, should I look at you? Should I look at them? You can look uh, at them. <laughs> uh, my name is Pamela Adiambo. I work with the Reproductive Health Network Kenya, and I am the advocacy officer there. And uh, we are basically a network of healthcare providers uh, offering uh, evidence-based sexual reproductive services and information. So yeah, I am here as an advocate for self-care in mm -hmm. sexual reproductive health. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. The blessed man amongst women. <laughs> Finally, uh, my name is uh, Tara K. Tara is a, a youth member of uh, the Reproductive Health Network, uh, the youth network specifically. Uh, Tara champions for sexual reproductive health and rights, uh, specifically for adolescent girls and young women. So we are here to speak about self-care and how you can improve your access to reproductive health, both information and services. Thank you. Pamela, why is self-care important? No, let's start with what, what is self-care? What is self-care? Self-care is something very, it means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. And um, for us ladies, self-care could be a day at the spa, go make okay. your nails, go for a massage. Um, but when we come to health, um, I will give uh, what the WHO defines it as self-care is basically the ability of individuals or families or communities to be able to promote their own health, to better manage their own health, to prevent diseases, and to even be able to cope with illnesses or disability with or without the help of a healthcare provider. So it can be you doing it uh, alone, or you can, you can do it with the support of a healthcare provider. So when we put it in, in the context of sexual reproductive health, this is basically you being able to know about your, your reproductive health. So I know my reproductive health. Have I gone to the doctor? Is it OK? Um, if I have an illness, for instance, if I get um, a sexual transmitted infection or disease, um, I'm, am I able to cope with it? Am I able to treat it? How am I going to prevent myself from getting it? So that is what basically self-care means. Um, the why. why? Why is it important? Why is Tara? it important? <laughs> let's allow Tara to give us that one. Sure. Um, as I introduced myself previously, I'm Tara, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I believe uh, self-care is important to youth uh, because uh, we have come along uh, a decade of uh, uh, the pandemic. We had the COVID, and um, we had a lot of challenges in accessing uh, our self-care because of the restrictions by uh, our beloved government. So I believe self-care is important because it ensures that uh, we have um, uh, uh, attainable health services uh, by la with or without a healthcare provider or a caregiver. Mm -hmm. So self-care entails or it gives or, uh, someone an autonomy uh, to have your own healthcare without you really accessing a healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pamela, what? should people do like i as an individual what are some of the activities i can practice to ensure i am practicing self safe self-care <clears throat> um what we normally say in terms of health health is a very delicate issue yes so we cannot just tell you go home jitibu you know mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not it's not as simple as that we usually recommend that 
self-care be initiated at a health facility mm -hmm. or with a healthcare provider. So the provider gives you the right information. So what do you need to know about this? So for instance, I go to a healthcare provider, I want to get information about contraceptives, for instance. I will have to go there, get the right information before I make decisions, informed decisions for myself. So there are so many things you might need to do to practice like um, a very comprehensive self 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 care. Um, first of all, get the right information. Uh -huh. Like I've said, we start from the health facility. If you cannot go to the health facility, uh, make sure you get <coughs> a professional to just explain to you what this is uh, in the context that you want to know. Also, you need to adhere to what the healthcare provider tells you because you cannot just go start doing things on your own. You need to follow a, a certain procedure. If the if the provider gives you pills and tells you, he unameza marambili kwa siku, you cannot just go outside and start saying, um, I will do it once a day because I want to, like I don't want to do it at night. So you have to get the right information. You have to follow procedures. You have to also be clean yourself because when it comes to sexual reproductive health, I mean, you have to maintain uh, sanitation, cl uh, cleanliness, because uh, I will say something that has been practiced for the longest time is, for instance, us girls, our menstrual health. Mm -hmm. People, that is self-care. People don't know that, but it is self-care. No one tells you to go to the to the to the shop to buy pads. Yeah. No one tells you that after three hours you're supposed to change pads. Even as much as you will read uh, you will read on it on the internet, but you'll just feel like ah no, this is uncomfortable. I need, I need to, to go, go out. change. Yeah. So you have to be very self aware to know if things are going wrong, if things are going right. What do I need to do? Who I do, who do I need to go to? Yeah. Wow. Moving on, Terra, what are some of the gaps that exist in regards to access of good reproductive health care, especially for the young adults and adolescents out there? Uh, I believe um, there are, um, are quite um, uh, huge gaps that we need to address in terms of um, enhancing health care among adolescent girls and uh, uh, to be specifically young women. Um, the gaps range from information up to service access. <coughs> So when you talk about in terms of uh, information, this comes in an instance where um, we still have marginalized cases of our uh, youths. Uh, we still have ignorance among the youths mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, accessing information. And uh, we as champions for sexual reproductive health and rights, we have a, um, we have a mandate to ensure that uh, um, our fellow youths and our fellow adolescent girls and uh, young women get the right information, uh, just as Pamela has said that um, we provide them with um, the correct information on how they can champion for their own self-care, which what criteria are, are we using uh, to ensure that self-care is available in the community? Um, what gaps or through the, <coughs> we have an aspect of our uh, digital health. Digital health is an advancement that is championing for um, self-care among adolescents who are thriving in the, uh, the internet sector because we tend to see that um, a lot of uh, uh, young people consume internet, and both of you can agree with me. Yes. So digital health is an advancement that we are using to cater for the gap of uh, uh, information. Mm. So in terms of services, we have different services that are coming up uh, that do tend to champion for self-care, uh, but we have to equip our youths with the knowledge on how to they can access uh, these services and where to get them. Yep. Earlier on, I had uh, stated that part of self-care is, you've also stated it, contraceptives and seeing a doctor and all that. There is still some amount of stigma in regards to the approach, the approach of self-care in regards to sexual reproductive mm. health. What can be done? How do we go about it? In I think even before we go to what can be done, there's a lot of challenges, barriers to mm -hmm. accessing this uh, information and services. Um, I think I'll just build on, on, on what Terra has said. Yeah. In regards to young people, there's a lot of stigma. When you just go to a health facility and just mention, I want contraceptives, it's like a whole, it's a big deal. Yeah, you're having sex. Especially if you goodness. find older people at yeah, the counter. Yeah, yes. so it's such a big challenge of facing stigma and that is why we are, we are promoting self-care because this will give you the privacy you are able to sit at home, take your gadget, 
text the doctor, I am feeling this and this, I want this and this, I can be able to get services without necessarily going to the health facility. It will also issue of cost. You know, as young people, most, most young people, we can't say that we, we are that well. Yeah, we, have money we are not yet afford. there. We are not yet there. Yeah, some of the people are still dependent on their parents. Mm -hmm. So when you even look at the issue of cost, someone needs to get services, but they cannot even go and get uh, pay their own fare to go to a health facility to, to get the information or the services they need. So when you look at the aspect of healthcare in terms of digital health, go through a, a hotline. Like for instance, us, we have a hotline called Nenana Binti. You can just call us and, and, and say, I, I think I need information on contraception. Which one is good for me? What, what do I do? Or just direct me to someone who can help me, who is around me. And then we refer you to someone who is very close to you and you can go get information from there. And th there's a lot that is coming up, even with key population. As you can see, people are becoming more open. Uh, the, the LGBTQ are coming up and they face, <coughs> sorry, they face a lot of stigma. They face a lot of stigma when they are going to seek these services. Someone will say, for instance, someone was raped. Uh, there's a lot of corrective rape in, uh, uh, on gay people. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> sorry. There's a lot of I am equally shocked. Rape. Yes, there's a lot of corrective rape that happens. And for instance, someone you know who is a lesbian goes to a healthcare facility and you're like, you are gay. How are you even pregnant? You know, there's a lot of stigma <laughs> that is facing. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry <laughs> for laughing. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so these things happen. Mm -hmm. And self-care is here to sort you. It's here to sort that young person who is forced to... <coughs> sorry. Who is forced to wait in line with someone who is their neighbor. You are here in line. We are seeing we are going to see a family planning doctor, a contraceptive doctor, and you're with your neighbor, mother's friend. Issues of consent. You are going there. You want to tell the provider to to give you a condom, but because they know your mother, they are like, Mama yako anajua? Uko hapa? Mama yako anajua uko hapa? Wacha ni mpigie simu. Alapo kwe ni mama wakanisa at that particular point. So you see, there's a lot of barriers when it comes to that, and there's a lot that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe, I've, since I've spoken a lot. We <laughs> move it to Tera. Yeah. Tera, I'm curious. Um, I have two questions. Number one, we, we've had like the home test kit for things like mm -hmm. HIV, yes? Mm -hmm. sure. Where you are allowed to go test yourself as much as you can and as frequent as you can. Sure. Can you term that as self-care? Yeah, um, uh, I believe that um, you've started with a HIV self-testing kit. Yes. There's a term self. Yes. Already there's a form of self-care. Self -care. Because it's non-judgmental non because it offers you privacy in a manner that you can be able to know your status without uh, the knowledge or uh, provocations from uh, the surroundings. So self-care uh, has been advanced in several ways. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, we mm -hmm. have uh, the digital health mm -hmm. uh, as a form of self-care. Uh, in terms of digital health, we have the uh, various platforms that youths can get the services that are, uh, that are available. Mm -hmm. So uh, HIV self-testing self kit is one of the forms of uh, uh, self-care. Mm -hmm. We have the HPV self-testing. Mm -hmm. HPV enables um, our adolescent girls and young women to test for uh, uh, cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. We have even uh, self-injectable contraceptives. Contraceptives, yes. Yeah. So you can just inject yourself from home. Mm -hmm. uh, we're championing also for um, self-collection uh, of um, uh, mm -hmm. specimens, like for gonorrhea and syphilis. You can just collect by yourself, then take it to the doctor without uh, being judgmental to you on how you collect it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there are several ways that we are championing for uh, access to uh, self care mm -hmm. in terms of services. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, when I earlier said it, I have two questions. Yeah. So that's the first one. Yeah. Why I was asking you that question is because, sure. number two, where do you draw the line? Where do you tell, uh, I have tested myself, do I need to now? Now my, 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 my uh, condition is positive. Mm -hmm. Do I need to go see a doctor? Or now that I know I'm positive, mm -hmm. fine. I can live with it. Or if I am negative, do I need to continue uh, to go see a doctor maybe for further tests or anything? Mm -hmm. Where do you put that line and yeah. say, now I know my situation. I mm -hmm. know my condition. What mm -hmm. do I do next? 
how do you tell the difference you've done the self care umejipimia kila kitu umepata results zako but then moving forward next so i believe uh, in the beginning of the conversation we spoke about uh, education mm-hmm. and you know education as an art is a, a social vaccine mm-hmm. a vaccine is something that uh, prevents you or uh, prevents a prevalence of a disease mm-hmm. so education is a social vaccine and you can agree with me on that yeah so um first thing that we advise on self care is be informed first have the information have the correct information on how you can go through uh, if you get the instances of uh, um either the negative or positive cases so first of all you have to be informed on the relevance of having self care mm-hmm. why do you need to have the service and how do you go after so we have um, um we have three steps mm-hmm. where we have uh, uh, capacity building mm-hmm. or counseling we have referral we have a referral then we have follow up so in terms of um, uh, the referral part uh, uh, the counseling part we equip you with information the relevant information that you need to know on the kind of service that you're going to take mm-hmm. referral part is where we refer you to a service provider where you'll get the necessary uh, product or drugs you're going to use then a uh, follow up part comes in where uh, we as a uh, reproductive health champions we can follow up on the individual that we have referred or we have uh, integrated several systems mm-hmm. where Pamela mentioned that uh, we as Reproductive Health Network Kenya we have the Nenanabinti platform also we have partnered with several organizations uh, we have a uh, uh, Daktari online so you can get information from several platforms mm-hmm. uh, that can guide you on how to go whenever you meet an anticipated case mm-hmm. yes Pamela yes. yes please <coughs> um, when we say self care it's not about self test and then sit at home like after self care and there's no treatment then what's the point mm-hmm. you know and i began by saying this is with or without the support of a healthcare provider mm-hmm. and for self care to happen there's a lot of things that need need to happen mm-hmm. and we need to have like we need to work together first of all like you said we partner with CSOs we need to with other organizations we need to even partner with the government it needs to be a holistic approach in a way that after i test i know i have gotten a positive but it could be a false positive i was actually about to tell you a story <laughs> that i saw on social media i uh-huh. think a week or two ago of an individual who self tested at home mm-hmm. then it came out positive mm-hmm. then he decided let me go to see a doctor and see if the results will be different and mm-hmm. they were actually different yeah they came out negative yeah. at the doctors mm-hmm. but the kit he used at home mm-hmm. came out positive. positive yeah so you know there's a lot that that contributes to that mm-hmm. maybe even the testing procedure he used was wrong or something yeah. he or she used was wrong or something but we always say if you get this uh results that you have at home what next you need to go to even the the lowest cadre of providers even if it's a community health uh, worker tell them this is what i've gotten where can i go to confirm my results who is accountable for those false false results that you're yes. getting at home so mm-hmm. we need a holistic approach where we see how we can be accountable for these people mm-hmm. how we can refer this person from the from the community health worker to a facility and we always say that if you're practicing self care be attached to a healthcare facility because mm-hmm. what happens if you have side effects yes. what happens if you do something wrongly and you don't know where to go so once once you get uh, your self care uh, intervention in, initiated at the healthcare facility mm-hmm. we usually advise you be linked to either a community health volunteer or a health worker or a health facility so that in case of anything mm-hmm. you are able to go back to the health facility or contact someone and, and just tell them there's something that has gone wrong how do i go about it mm-hmm. yeah tera she's yeah. talked about accountability sure. uh, which leads me to the question what are the legal frameworks that are in that area mm. of sexual reproductive health mm-hmm. um self care what are the functional legal frameworks that are there because if you get a positive results yeah. and then you go to a hospital and sure. it's negative one it's really messed up your mental state yeah. sure. the amount of thoughts you've had in between that journey <laughs> from your house to the doctors sure. yeah. you've even contemplated you said at some point sure so i believe uh, kenya we are way ahead in terms of our laws and policies yeah but uh, we need to have um, uh, some 
good implementation frameworks in place. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'll begin with the supreme uh, law in the land, which is the Constitution. The Constitution under Article 43, mm -hmm. uh, it categorically says that um, every, every person in Kenya has a right to the highest attainable standard of health. Yeah. Yeah. And it provides uh, the st stipulations. Uh, under Article 26, it even categorizes, categorizes cases where uh, someone can access uh, certain services. Yeah. So I believe um, we have several uh, policies in place, mm -hmm. even the Health Act policy of uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, uh, we were uh, during COVID, uh, we, were, we were given the guidelines on how one can get services. Uh, in terms with the continuation of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that was a plus to uh, the uh, lower cards of our service provision. We have an uh, Kenya Health e Kenya e Health Strategy Policy mm -hmm. that was launched in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's a plus to the ICT uh, ICT departments of the government because uh, it provides a negotiation for digital health both at the national settings and at the county levels. So um, the conversation that uh, we should be having uh, and collaboration with partnerships with the government mm -hmm. is that how do we promote now um, the implementation of these policies? Mm -hmm. Because we have good policies, but uh, we lack strategies to implement them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Can I build on that? Yes, please. Um, globally, we have the WHO Consolidated Guidelines for Self-Care. Mm -hmm. And that covers like the whole world. So if we look at self-care in terms of contraception, uh, the general sexual reproductive health, in safe abortion, it looks at it holistically in terms of self-testing, self-awareness, self-management. But you know we cannot always use what is global because we have our own issues here mm -hmm. in Kenya. We have to domesticate it to a way that fits into our country context, you know? Yeah. So um, we have a gap that we don't have um, a specific guideline here in Kenya that speaks to self-care. Though I, I hear there are conversations that they are, they are being developed mm -hmm. uh, by the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. but currently we do not have. And as he has said, we are just picking from here and here. There are bits and pieces of self-care in the policies and the guidelines, but mm -hmm. there is no clear guideline that guides us on self-care. Yes. So that is a gap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Allow me to read some feedback. We have Mtutuwa um, Mariam. Kindiki is a happy man. I agree that was on the news updates earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Elijah Kimani watching from Kandara Moranga. Thank you so much for joining us. Mose uh, Saika, well represented. Thank you. We have Fabio Wanjohi. Does self-care apply to men? Tera, does self-care apply to men? I don't want to answer that. Uh, yeah, I believe uh, self-care is holistic in a, in a manner that uh, it cut across mm -hmm. all the others. Mm -hmm. Because in a, in a sense that um, um, we have cases of uh, uh, incorrect usage of condoms. Yes. I believe we have the female condoms and we have the male condoms. Mm -hmm. And in the case of male condoms, uh, we expect it's males who use the male condom. Mm -hmm. So we have cases where um, male condoms don't, uh, uh, they're not correctly worn. Yeah. Yeah. So... I believe uh, you wear it yourself, so it's a form of self-care. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So definitely, we need to equip these uh, our male our male co uh, fellows mm -hmm. with the correct information of how to use uh, the several services that we have for the males in the community. I believe there is a conversation going around on Mary stops. Wow. Yes, yeah. they have um, yeah. free vasectomy services this week. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. That is also self-care. Uh, that's self-care. So you're wondering how is vasectomy <laughs> self-care? It sure. is. Sure. It is. Yeah. yeah. It is. It is. I, I, I'd like to believe women are the ones who take up almost all the responsibility yeah. in yeah. regards to contraception, family planning, and all that. Yeah. Sure. For the men who are taking it up, it's a good step. Yeah. Sure. Releasing some baggage off our shoulders. Yeah. Sure. We call yeah. for male involvement. involvement. <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> and, and researchers need to also do a lot of research That's on true. men contraceptives. I mean, we have yeah. a whole lot of options. And then men are just like, Imagine. Uh, like it's like the game is on one side. Yes. It, it has always been. It has always been on one side. side. On yeah. one side. <laughs> yeah. mm, allow me to build up on what you've said in regards to men's self-care. Earlier on as I was starting, I spoke about HPV. Sure. It is known that men are the carriers of the HPV virus. It does not affect them. Yeah. But then upon 
sexual interaction with a woman it's the woman who mm. acquires it and later on it builds to, to cervical, cervical cancer, cancer. Sure. so if a man takes care of themselves not to i don't know what i, I really I, i've not read really deeply into it of, mm. on what a man can do mm -hmm. not to be a carrier or if you are a carrier you are born i don't know <laughs> i honestly do not know uh, I, uh, I think that's also you should, you're taking care of themselves yeah. Uh, I believe, uh, uh -huh. I believe in terms of uh, even HPV, we have a conversation around uh, bacterial infection. Yes. I believe even um, most men tend to be carriers of bacterial infection because mm -hmm. they, it doesn't appear to men. Men, the the incubation period for men uh -huh. tends to be longer than the incubation period for females. Yeah. So um, as a form of self care, it's good for uh, uh, our, mayor, uh, our fellow men. To have frequent checkups huh? on uh, on on methods of uh, uh, keeping themselves safe, safe by testing for uh, bacterial infection. I was even about to ask you: Do men go see their doctors as frequent as women go see their <laughs> gynecologists? <laughs> do they? I think we 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 do have a more health-seeking behavior mm. because we are more prone. You know, we are always so vulnerable. Yeah, mm -hmm. something small, you go to a wrong toilet. So I believe we should cultivate a, mm. a, a notion of a, a health seeking behavior among us, our male, male, yeah. male friends. And you don't have to be sick to go see a doctor. Yeah. Sure. They're called the urologists. <laughs> what, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what is the name of a uh, sexual reproductive mm. health doctor for men? Oh wow! There yeah. is. They there there is. I think it's urologist. <laughs> <laughs> really? What is it called? Wait. Um, carry on. Carry on as I Google. So carry I on. believe. Uh, I believe we should uh, keep the conversation uh, mm -hmm. uh, among our males uh, mm -hmm. in ways they can uh, champion for their own self care because uh, we have a notion of stigma among most mm. among most men. Ju tapata conversation in the lay ground a lafu mutu anakuliza. Pia we unanda kuona daktari juu tu kama hivi dogo. That should not be the conversation. That sounds like a stigma. It's a taboo because it was built. If the doctor mm. does not even have a name, it is serious. <laughs> I believe we share the name. Againa, yeah. really? I don't know. I feel like they can also. They can also, they can have, also have right? Yeah. Are we being mean? No. No. no, no, we're not being no. mean. Yeah, so no. even even uh, as you're saying, I feel like even when people get into relationships and you know you are sexually active, I usually advise that I would rather go with your partner to a provider first. Have all the tests done. Yes, have all the tests done. We cannot be risking all the time and praying to God to protect us. Let us go to the One provider. chance. <laughs> Give me a last <laughs> chance. In terms of infections, in terms of pregnancy, look for a contraception method that works for you. And the good thing about self-care, what I was saying at the beginning is, you go to the provider, to a health practitioner, they give you all the options. So you decide, you know, um, I know maybe I'm not good with taking pills, so, Daktari, mimi ni pay IUD. And then you'll be like, I know I have multiple partners, so... Mimi IUD sitawezana nayo. Maybe give me an implant, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So you know yourself better. After the doctor gives you information, the information that you need, yeah. you can be able to tell the doctor, according to my lifestyle, this is what I want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Tara? Yes. And I've just seen, I've, I've, I've uh, hung, hung because I've just seen the meaning of a urologist. A urologist is a medical doctor mm -hmm. specializing in conditions that affect the urinary tract in men women and children and diseases that affect the reproductive system oopsie i am sorry i have learned it's something today <laughs> so it, it is it's general yeah. a urologist is general sure. yeah cuts across it yeah. cuts across mm -hmm. so also i'd like to assume a gyna is the same but it imagine a man telling you i'm going to see a gyna Okay. That would sound very weird. So we need to, I, we, we, we need to be mystified. We are, also, <laughs> we are also selling stigma <laughs> yeah, towards yeah, the men. Yeah. So, uh -huh, you can add, maybe you can build up on what she said in regards to uh, in relationships, how you start off. Mm -hmm. um, are we championing for self-care <coughs> in terms of our uh, uh, young people? Mm -hmm. Because uh, our research was done and uh, and under kids, yes, mm -hmm. and um, it tends to uh, say that um, uh, the sexual debate among our youths is between 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. 
they tend to have their first sexual encounter between the ages of 15 to 20. 20 years. So I believe um, we tend to have a gap huh, among uh, the rural, specifically the rural rural youths huh, mm. who don't or who are not equipped with the correct information on how to go while they're engaging in the first sexual encounter. Mm -hmm. Because even the same same KDHS says that um, one to five girls in the ages between 15 to 19 years is either pregnant, pregnant or has her, she has had the first child. Mm. So you see... Between 15 to 20? 15 to 19 for girls. Huh? Oh, uh -huh. One in every five between 15 to 19 years. Okay. Yeah. You either give them birth or you have... have you have, you're, pregnant. you're pregnant. You're pregnant. You're pregnant. Yeah. So okay. you see, we have a gap. Huh? Mm -hmm. We have a gap that we have to cover. Now, this can only be covered when we equip uh, our adolescent girls with the correct information mm -hmm. because right, they tend to um, they tend to engage in these uh, or in their unsafe acts because they lack information and then they tend to, uh, to be equipped with information in a later age mm -hmm. so it creates a gap in terms of even addressing um, our services access and uh, even uh, championing for uh, uh, the relevance of our uh, 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 this, uh, the low uh, health providers mm -hmm. at um, the grassroots levels. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, as we're winding up, Pamela, maybe talk to the young people, tell them something in regards to self care. Wow. Which camera? <laughs> the young one. people. Um, self care is very important, and uh, as we as young people are facing a lot of issues. Uh, in terms of accessing sexual reproductive health and services. And to my, my advice to you is that self-care is very important. Self-care has the potential to solve some of these issues we are facing, some of these barriers we are having in the healthcare system, the gaps. Self-care has the potential to solve that. So just make sure you're getting the right information from um, credited sources. If you, you are not sure about the information you are getting on Dr. Google, please go to a healthcare provider or text us on Nenana Binti or call us at 0800-211-227. We'll be able to assist you. Make sure you're getting the right information. Make sure before you do anything you have consulted because there is potential for abuse for these things. So we need to be regulated also. So just make sure you're getting the right information. Make sure you're doing the right thing. You're adhering to what the doctor has said and we'll be good, yeah. Maybe give us the hotline one more time. Oh, uh, the hotline number. We are Nena Nabinti. You can call us, it's a, a toll free. You don't need airtime. So 0800 211 227. For all men and women. Yes, you can call. Even the people we even get calling us. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So anyone if you have issues you need someone to talk to you need advice on sexual reproductive health you need um information on contraception any sort of information if you feel of a burden that you just want to let out feel free to call us mm -hmm. yeah Terra. um i'd like to begin with the national yes county to uh, the grassroots level so mm -hmm. for national government um we need to put in place um policies and structures mm -hmm. that won't restrict our adolescent uh, youths mm -hmm. uh, in terms of accessing to information and services because we have an issue with uh, uh, gaps in ages that tend to, uh, uh, ages that are legally uh, approved by the government for uh, uptake of services, mm -hmm. but we need to regulate that. Um, at the county uh, levels, we need uh, to have a, a much more comprehensive form of primary health care mm -hmm. that will champion for a much uh, uh, accessible and affordable services at the grassroots levels. And um, to my youths, my fellow youths, and my fellow uh, to our adolescent young people, uh, you just have to acquire the correct information from accredited services, as Pamela has said. Uh, if you have any concern or if you have challenges in terms of um, uh, sexual productive health, you can reach us on Nena Nabinti, both on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram, and also through the hotline. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where do we get you on social media? 
the nena or us? <laughs> both, of, <laughs> both, both, both you. Maybe there's someone who would want to reach out to you specifically, or they would want to reach out to the organization through social media. Uh, you can reach out to us at RHNK, a Reproductive Health Network, mm -hmm. on Twitter. I am Pamela Adiambo on Twitter. And uh, you can also get us easily on TikTok, Nana Nabinti TikTok. We do a lot of shenanigans there to just make sure you are informed. So you can also DM us there. Mm -hmm. And even on Instagram, Reproductive Health Network Kenya. Oh. Yeah. Tara? Sure. Um, you can get me on Facebook at Tara Keith, on Twitter at Tara Keith without an underscore, um, and on LinkedIn, Keith Tara. Uh, for our organization, we are we cut across. Mm. The Productive Health Network is on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Reproductive Health Network Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for sharing with us the 